No matter how hard you try, you can't stop us now. No matter how hard you try, you can't stop As we spoke about earlier, Mayor Ford is going to eradicate the graffiti from the walls of the business buildings. I've heard that you've received a notice from the city. Can you tell me a little about it? We didn't have any graffiti, and one day it showed up, and a couple of days later I had a notice to get rid of the graffiti. I was given two days to get rid of it. Uh, I phoned the city and said I thought that was unreasonable, length of time, and that I'd never had graffiti before, and I didn't cause it, and uh, what could we do about it? And uh, they didn't really have any answer. Uh, I found that it was going to cost me in excess of $2,000 to get rid of it. How much would it cost the people out there to remove this graffiti? It's, it's currently $500 to clean up just this building. And what happens if they come? somebody comes and does it again the next, next night? Well, that, that's again, you're back into more dollars. So what do you suggest? How can we solve this graffiti issue? Maintenance programs. Uh, maintenance programs, what we have in several of the cities in Canada, and that, yeah. the city of Vancouver, the city of Ottawa, the city of Calgary, they push the city on a maintenance program. So our company goes out, any reports of graffiti goes to a graffiti hotline, and all graffiti gets removed, gets reported, our trucks travel daily, um, cars spotting graffiti, report it, it's all tracked. Well, people, uh, these taggers, they want to see their stuff, graffiti stay up. Uh, it's no good if it keeps coming down. It's, it's a status to have your name up. But it's no good if it's but removed. But it's no good constantly. if it's removed right away. So they don't want to waste their paint so much. So what they're finding is people, there's less taggers in those cities. Oh, okay. Um, because they know it's not going to stay up anyway. Hello, we're here with Scott Mills from the Toronto Police Services. And today we want to know actually who is doing the graffiti. And Scott, who does this graffiti behind you? Well, right behind me is, uh, is an accomplished graffiti crew here in uh, Toronto. Uh, they're called HSA crew. And uh, they're uh, known throughout Toronto and throughout the world uh, for their accomplished graffiti art skills. So it's, uh, it's not uh, who you might think is doing the graffiti. Um, a lot of these artists are quite accomplished and uh, quite well known and have uh, uh, a lot of fame. And uh, they actually make uh, quite a bit of money off of commissions for a, a number of their uh, graffiti art pieces. Okay, so it's not gangbangers mostly, or, or per the perception of? In, in Toronto, uh, I'd say less than 5% of uh, any type of graffiti in Toronto is gang related. And uh, so uh, th that's a misperception that it's gang related. This is more hip hop style that's behind me. And um, it's uh, actually uh, graffiti art that's wanted in the area by the majority of the citizens and, and is appreciated. And it's actually a tourist uh, attraction as opposed to anything else. So that's being pulled that most of the people, citizens, do actually like the art in their area? Well, it depends where you are. If, uh, if you're out in the burbs and there's not a lot of graffiti, um, it's, it's not uh, really accepted. But down here, we're in the, I'm standing in the Queen West Alleys right now, which is known as Rush Lane or, or Graffiti Alleys in Toronto. And, and it's become a custom and a norm, uh, almost squatters' rights for the graffiti artists down here. That they come down here and they talk to the property owners and they get the permission from the property owners to do this type of artwork that you see behind oh, me. So they do get permission? They certainly do. And uh, uh, at times when they're running low on paint, uh, myself as a police officer will even uh, reach out and, uh, and uh, work with some community partners to get them uh, paint. And uh, it really creates a, a partnership and a trust. And uh, it's not a well understood partnership and trust. And who does this? I mean, what is the motivation behind it? You mentioned they get commissions. Because people come down here and look at it, uh, take pictures of it and send it around the world, they get, the artists get calls from people, uh, companies uh, that are uh, looking for artwork for various things, and they say, we want to pay you for your artwork. So th they end up getting a commission for their, their artwork uh, because of what's seen down here. So it, it's a really good thing for the artists. It's a really good thing for the community. Okay, and final question. The mayor is putting this as a priority to, to eradicate graffiti. How do you re eradicate graffiti well, in this city? You can't eradicate graffiti. It's, it's impossible. Uh, what you can do is have strategies to, uh, 
uh, overcome vandalism graffiti and uh, work closely with those vandals to make them into community builders uh, so that they uh, improve their art skills and also get out of the mindset that uh, it's only graffiti if it's illegal and get them into the mindset of some of these artists like you see behind me uh, that actually are accomplished and, and do things with permission uh, of the property owners and the consent uh, and the blessing of the community and they actually make some money off of it. So it, it's, it's a question of, uh, of social alchemy uh, is a good way to put it, is take, take a negative and turn it to a positive and if you have strategies for that you'll drastically reduce your vandalism graffiti. If we have a balanced approach and we're working as a team and that team includes uh, the police, city officials, bylaw officials, as well as graffiti artists and community members. If we're all working as a team, we can accomplish uh, a, a lot of good things with the graffiti theme. Well, Scott, how effective would it be, and they're doing it now, if you get a notice, you take off the graffiti, and some will argue that every time you take it off, the less likely the artist will come back and put it on that wall. Yeah, it's actually quite ineffective, uh, in my personal opinion. Uh, I've been dealing with graffiti for about six years uh, down in this area, and uh, what the bylaw effectively does is, is it makes a victim of a victim, because uh, you get a bylaw officer that goes up to a property owner and says, you have to remove this uh, vandalism graffiti or the city will remove it and, and bill your taxes uh, for that service. And what happens is about a week later, the vandal comes back and revandalizes it, and so it, it becomes an endless cycle. So, uh, the philosophy that I've been using is, is a community building approach that, that tries not to make a victim of a victim. Well, the the, the mayor of Toronto could, could be the hero, believe it or not, to the arts community. I, I firmly believe that. Um, it's a matter of sitting down at the table with the right stakeholders. We have some questions from the graffiti specialist uh, artist's perspective, and the first question we have for uh, Zion would be, you know, why the graffiti? Why is it the uh, graffiti artists do the work they do? Well, um, I'm, I've always been an artist. Uh, as an artist, you want to stay as contemporary as you can. You uh, uh, learn your art history and uh, coming up, just drawing in high school. And uh, graffiti art is the number one medium uh, for our century, our generations coming up. Uh, it isn't just a thing about sitting down and using art supplies, it's, it's about the, the actions that come with them and the camaraderie that takes place between uh, uh, individuals. The number one message behind the art form is style. Style. We take uh, our name, we take our letters, and we bend them in such a way where we're showing uh, our community, how much style we have, and how much ups we have as well. Style, style meaning just like how a, a calligrapher would take a calligraphy pen and do a classic gothic or a sans script or within graffiti we have so many different styles for so many different areas worldwide and to be a master of one style or even many puts you into a, in a, in a crazy category. Uh, as being one of the renowned artists worldwide. Well, you, to take the standpoint of eradicating graffiti is so last generation, maybe even two generations back. Um, this, is, this has been a fight since the 60s of whether it's a good thing or bad thing. And in the year like 2011, I think it's already past that point of what it is. You have very recognized artists and companies around the art form that to take a standpoint that it's a bad thing shows uh, uh, almost Neanderthal type of mentality. My advice to the people in City Hall would be to get some education of the art form first because they can easily uh, have themselves pigeonhole themselves uh, as being uh, that Neanderthal of not having an understanding which makes someone ignorant. Um, yeah, I think it's to, to take the time and research. There's plenty of, uh, uh, of history on the internet. Maybe they should use Google and search. Yeah, but uh, it, it's, yeah, the art form is so, so uh, uh, advanced. Like I said, it's 2011. The fight's been going on since the 60s. So we have a period of time where you know, you can study and understand that it, it, it isn't a, a criminal 
organization of, of, uh, of, of uh, delinquents causing harm to anyone.